Hello and welcome to the Biostock Studio here at Medicom Village in Lund. I am joined today by the CEOs of two biotech companies working in the field of oncology. Niels Brunner, the CEO of Scanion Oncology, uh, and Perno Lehn, the CEO of Alligator Bioscience. Scanion Oncology is working to uh, counteract cancer drug resistance, which is one of the main obstacles in the fight against cancer, while uh, Alligator Bioscience is developing immunotherapy treatments against cancer. The two companies have recently uh, signed a uh, collaboration agreement, a preclinical collaboration agreement, and uh, they will explore combination therapies with chemotherapy and immune oncology. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Niels, I will begin with you. Um, could you give us a little bit of the background of this uh, collaboration, how it started? Did you reach out to Pat or vice versa? Yeah, actually, uh, first of all, I'm very pleased about having this collaboration with uh, Alligator Bioscience. Uh, we have seen this coming, but uh, actually uh, I realized that it was Alligator that could be our collaborator when we met at one of these uh, Medicon Valley uh, uh, oncology network meetings. And I heard uh, Pierre talking and uh, I suddenly saw the picture. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I reached out to uh, Pierre and uh, we, um, talked a little bit about it during the meeting and then we met afterwards and you could see it did fit really together this. So that was really nice. So it was actually based on this oncology network. Great. <clears throat> um, well, it, to continue with you, uh, resistance to chemotherapy, as I mentioned earlier, is one of the main obstacles in the fight against cancer. Um, so I was wondering if you could expand on this and what is it uh, about cancer cells that renders them resistant to drugs? Yeah, first of all, uh, a little bit less than half of all newly diagnosed cancer patients will die from their disease. And the main reason for that is resistance. So it's a major problem. Most people know about antibiotics and resistance to antibiotics, but very few people know actually that cancer cells, they can also develop resistance, and they do in about half of the cases. And when they develop resistance, they are now insensitive to the drugs that we are giving uh, to the patients. But to make things even worse, they now uh, often become uh, multi-drug resistance. That means they also become resistant to other drugs and it's impossible for us to do something for the patient. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of the background. And we should also remember that, uh, for example, in, in Sweden, it's more than 60 uh, Swedish people every day dying from cancer. In Denmark, it's about 40 people every day. So it's a huge problem, and it's mainly due to resistance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, knowing about uh, resistant mechanisms, what is it that the cancer cells can do or do uh, to become resistant? It's then possible to, to start uh, finding drugs or developing drugs that can interfere with these resistance mechanisms. Like with bacteria, if you can find out how bacteria become resistant to certain types of antibiotics, you can make new drugs that bypass or blocks or whatever these resistant mechanisms. And that's what we are doing in Scandian Oncology, based on a lot of different things, including a huge grant from the Danish Grundforskningsfond that we had for six years. It's a major grant coming from oil money from the North mm -hmm. Sea. We uh, developed a lot of, of uh, different tools, including a screening platform, and using that, we uh, found several drugs that can interfere with uh, drug resistance. And one of them is SEO 101, mm -hmm. our most advanced drug. And what was very nice with this drug was that not only that it works and it has at least two different mechanisms of action in blocking resistance, but it had also already passed clinical phase one for a non-cancer indication, nothing with cancer. But for different reasons, it was uh, stopped the development by this former owner of the, the drug and was standing on a shelf. And we got many drugs from this company and tested it. And this one worked out beautifully. So we saved a lot of time hmm. and of uh, at least 100 million Danish krona. Okay, great. Well, thanks, thanks so much for that uh, background. Um, I was actually going to ask you about SC, uh, SEO 101 and how it works, but uh, you've uh, gone into that already. Yeah, I could, could perhaps just add that that the, one of the, the mechanisms of, mechanism of action of SEO 101 has never been tried in any clinical trials before. There's quite a lot of preclinical data uh, showing that if you inhibit this uh, target, it's a kinase, mm. 
uh, I'm not going to exactly the details about this, but if you inhibit it, you get a lot of anti-cancer effects, including conversion of resistance. The other target is a well-known target, but also it has never been tried in clinical trials. This is this drug efflux pump. So we know a lot of both targets from preclinical work, but nobody has ever tested it in, in patients because we have the first drug. Mm -hmm. um, per, now to you. Uh, you're working, you're focused on developing cancer immunotherapy treatments. Uh, so I was wondering if you could uh, discuss a little bit uh, what immunotherapy in cancer is, why it's important, uh, especially in regards to this collaboration. Uh, absolutely. So immunotherapy, just the basics, uh, it's drugs activating the immune system rather than attacking the cancer itself. So mm -hmm. Uh, if you take a traditional cyto, I mean, chemotherapy or any drug uh, within oncology, it is focused on targeting the cancer cell. Immunotherapy targets the immune cells. They are activated and the immune system does a job and the immune system attacks the cancer. Uh, with metasalimab, which is a, sort of a, the focus of this collaboration, uh, that's a product, <coughs> sorry, it's a product that uh, it brings about one of the key uh, components of the immune system. One part is uh, the attack uh, system, which is T cells. Mm -hmm. The other part is uh, guiding those attack cells to the right uh, point and to the right cell. And that is the antigen presenting cells. And that's what metasalamab does. It improves antigen presentation. So it basically shows the immune system what to attack in a much more clear way and uh, that has now been uh, demonstrated that uh, in combination with chemotherapy there is a strong synergy and in particular in pancreatic cancer and that's mm -hmm. where the synergy with the uh, scandium comes about mm -hmm. so uh, we bring about uh, different uh, expertise within this area uh, scandium mm -hmm. of course have a great experience in uh, uh, pancreatic models for chemotherapy resistance and we have experience in immunotherapy models and combined we <clears throat> now can get uh, a lot of synergy from that. Great. Peter could one say that we are actually on the, uh, have the same focus because you could say that you are also targeting resistance. Yes, I mean absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a way of avoiding yeah. chemotherapy resistance by targeting another mechanism which is immune system yeah. and then uh, immune resistance it doesn't really occur because the immune system is adaptive. Mm -hmm. So there, that's a way to avoid uh, chemotherapy resistance as well. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure you could go on and on talking about these uh, <laughs> modes of action. Um, but uh, getting into the nitty gritty of the collaboration, uh, just wondering uh, uh, if, if you could expand on the terms of the agreement. Um, yeah, in general. <laughs> Do you want to start? Yeah, sure. So it's a, it's a co-development we do together, and we are interested in the results together. So it's a, it's a joint preclinical effort. Uh, we do the experiments together, and we share the costs. And mm -hmm. I think that's a high-level summary. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And uh, speaking of costs, um, how how will the project be financed? I think that's, uh, for us at least, is part of the development uh, costs for our programs. So uh, whenever you have a clinical development program, you always need to build up a strong data package behind it. And in this case, we can make a much stronger package by collaborating with Scandium. So mm -hmm. it's part of the already budgeted costs, I would mm -hmm. say. And it's the same to us. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, this is also for both of you. What challenges do you foresee in this, in this particular project? If any at all, maybe no challenges at all. <laughs> I, I would say when you, when you do preclinical pre experiments, you never know whether you will succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the case. But I think all the theory uh, behind it fits yeah. what we are doing. So I would be extremely surprised if we didn't see this additive or synergistic effect by adding SEO 101 to. Um, the, the other drugs and mm -hmm. including the CD40 antibody. Uh, I think we, we need to say that uh, when Pierre told that you get uh, additive or synergistic effect between immune oncology drugs and chemotherapy, you only get it if the chemotherapy works. And then they release these antigens that are taken up by the dendritic cells and uh, the CD40 antibody by alligator, 
will facilitate that everything goes along. But if the cancer is resistant, it, it will not get this additive effect. And that's why where it fits. And I can see no reasons why it wouldn't uh, work in preclinical pre models. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have the different components of those models have mm -hmm. been set up and tested in both companies. And now we bring it together. And I think we have a very clear uh, hypothesis as well. So we will get an answer. And hopefully it's a good one. Yeah, yeah that's great. Um, so um, in the near term, what are the next steps in this collaboration? And uh, when can we expect uh, preclinical trials to begin? They are already yeah. ongoing, I would it's say. It's ongoing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's already on its way. And uh, next step, uh, as we said, I mean, if this is positive, we are happy to go into a clinical collaboration later on, uh, or at least discuss the details around it, how we can uh, build on the data further. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Um, and uh, another interesting aspect about this collaboration is uh, combination therapies seem to be the way forward in a sense, whether it's immuno-oncology or uh, drugs against cancer, uh, cancer drug resistance. Um, why Could I get your thoughts on why combination therapy is uh, the way to go, let's say. And wh why not just one drug that can solve the problem? <laughs> yeah, so, so, first of all, uh, cancer is characterized by being heterogeneous. Mm -hmm. That means that there are cancer cells in a tumor in the lump that are different. So you, if you only hit half of the cancer cells, the rest will survive <clears throat> and grow up. So we actually need to hit all of them. So you need combination therapy. Secondly, there are different mechanisms of resistance. And uh, if you have a drug that only have one uh, way to inhibit resistance, in our case here, you might have other cells that can withstand um, SEO 101 as an example, and they will grow up and so on. So you need to combine, and I see immune oncology, chemotherapy, and SEO 101 to cover, hopefully, this is most of the spectrum of the heterogeneity, and then we eventually can not only prolong survival, but perhaps if we can move it to the start of the disease, cure more patients. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you mentioned uh, the preclinical models will be mm -hmm. in pancreatic cancer, is yes, that correct? correct. Um, I'm wondering, uh, in the long term, do you foresee mm -hmm. maybe going into other indications as well, and not just pancreatic cancer? Yeah. Uh, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Pancreatic cancer is sort of an archetypical, difficult to treat cancer, which is uh, what we call a cold tumor. So it's mm -hmm. uh, in the immune perspective, it's uh, difficult to treat with immunotherapy. Mm -hmm. By adding chemotherapy, you will uh, hit the tumor cells and they will release their interior. And that means uh, you get a lot of antigens from the tumor cells mm -hmm. into the circulation. And then when you add on immunotherapy, you can suddenly get a response. And again, that uh, just uh, answers also the question why combination therapy is important. So that mechanism is important in any cold tumor. Pancreatic cancer is one, but you have breast cancer, you have prostate cancer, uh, colorectal cancer, you name it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. uh, from our point of view, uh, SO 101 is not specific for a certain cancer type. Mm -hmm. It's specific for the treatment. So, uh, for example, in the pancreatic cancer uh, models, we are giving uh, our drugs together the taxanes. It's a, a group of, of uh, chemotherapeutic drugs that are very, very effective, and they're used for at least 10 different cancer diseases. So for each of these cancer diseases, if we can show in pancreatic cancer that we get this triple synergy, we can move it to the other cancer forms, which are actually uh, many of those we just mentioned. So we go for the drug, not the cancer form. And I think it's more or less the same for you, that the immune system can actually attack all different cancer forms. But you just need to make them primed to be reached by the immune cells. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, and just finally, just to sum up the, the conversation here, what are the takeaways, the main takeaways you hope to achieve with this collaboration? Yeah, from our perspective, we know that metasalamab, our lead product, it has strong synergy with chemotherapy in pancreatic cancer. And with Scandion, maybe we can make that synergy last for a much longer time by, by avoiding resistance. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of upside. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, for scandal oncology, it it certainly broadened the field of application for scandal oncology. I can say that we have heard for, from different uh, companies that adding a drug to chemotherapy might not be the most sexy uh, they have heard about because chemotherapy is something that everybody knows about. That's something you just give and so. But if you could get it to work together with immune therapy, this is really what we're looking for. So this would give us a fantastic opportunity. Great. Well, thank you so much uh, to both of you for, for joining us today. And we certainly look forward to seeing what this collaboration uh, brings fruit. And uh, yeah, hope to see you again soon. Thank, Thank you. you.